Hi, welcome to Casey Coding. This is uh, Casey, and I literally just finished doing my first video on for loops, and I just felt like giving you guys a little bit more of an advanced look into for loops, just in case you need it. So, uh, just to review, there's the three sections of the for loop that we talked about. There's when you instantiate the variable, instantiate, someone will pronounce that properly sometime. And then uh, there's the condition that the loop meets for it to keep, uh, keep looping, and then there is the way that the, uh, I guess you'd call it the counter, or the index is modified every time. That's right here, it says I++. Now, uh, I showed you how you can do, uh, when, uh, I showed you how you can do it so that when I is uh, less than or equal to eight, I also showed you how you can do it so it's just less than eight, things like that. Uh, if you want, you can actually do something more interesting. Uh, if you want, you could actually make it so that when it's greater than, zero it loops, right? That, that makes sense. And you know what, if you want, you can start I off at 10, and instead of adding up, you can go minus minus. So now, when we run this loop, you'll see it starts at 10, and it goes all the way to one, because uh, like I said earlier, uh, when it hits zero, what happens is it goes, hey, zero is uh, not greater than zero, zero is equal to zero, and it doesn't print out zero. So pretty obvious right there. Now, uh, some of you guys might be asking, uh, well, Casey, what if I want to go from 1 and let's make this go till 20, and let's say I want to do it in increments of 3. So what you do is instead of going plus plus or minus minus, you go plus equals 3. Alright? Okay, so now I'm going to show you why this works right here. It's actually kind of interesting and it becomes very useful and quick later. So let's say we have int temp. And temp is equal to 5. Makes sense, right? Now, what you used to do, old way, what you used to do is you go temp is equal to temp plus 5. Perfectly logical. You just added 5 to temp. Temp is now equal to 10. Now this is the new one. Temp plus equals the number you want to add to it, and then a semicolon at the end like you normally would. So basically, you've turned this line of code into something a little bit more manageable and a little bit less confusing. You know, this does have some pitfalls. This way is much more elegant. I would definitely recommend going with this way. And what happens is that you use this in the same way that it works here. You're taking i and you're adding 3 each time. Now the other thing that you can do is, uh, just so you know why, what you used to do if you just wanted to add 1 is you have to do the same thing. Temp is equal to temp plus 1. Now what you can do is you can do that. You can do temp plus equals 1. Or you can make it one character shorter and go temp plus plus. That's just something to add to Java, it's something nice. I'd take advantage of it if I were you because it makes your code way shorter, especially if you're doing for loops. So you just do i plus plus. That increments by one each time. Pretty easy. So you know what? Let's run that code that I wrote earlier where you go up to 20 and it increments by three each time. So let's run this and let's just watch. I'm sorry, I had my condition backwards, which is something you want to look out for. I accidentally made it so that when i is greater than 20, so it didn't run at all. So what you want to make sure you do it is so that when i is less than 20, it runs. Just a mistake. It's actually a good thing I made that mistake, because it's something you guys should know. You always got to check the operator. So just going to run that. So it goes from 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. Exactly what it's supposed to do. Because when it hits 20, uh, when it hits 21, it automatically stops because it is over 20, and that's when it stops. So uh, this has been Casey for Casey Coding, and uh, you just got to look at some more advanced for loops, and I'm logging off.